Nitwittians, we got an awesome video in store for you this evening. We are going to be getting rid of the stock cooler out of this Legion T5. This thing is a pourable. Um, during, my, during my testing, I've seen this thing get up to 90C Celsius, and uh, that is just not a good area for a uh, CPU to be sitting, especially if you want to keep your boost clocks up and you're gaming at uh, top notch. Um, as you can see here on the table, I got everything that would possibly go into here. I don't have some of the Noctua's that'll go in here, but as you can see, this uh, the NHU9S will go in there. Of course, the NHL965 is a real little square guy that you've seen me put in some of the TGs. And then, of course, the NHC14S will also fit in here. Um, the Master Liquid Pro 280 and 240 versions will fit in here. If you don't want to have to bust the bank and put the NZXT Kraken uh, Z53 RGB, you can go, and this is the cheaper side of the thing, or to the cheaper scale of things, and you can put one of those in. But as you can see, I did put, uh, there's a 120 in here with the EVGA 2080 Super, and the reason I did this is just to be able to show you guys that you can fit all these radiators in here and it will work. Pretty much what's in store for this upgrade is we are gonna be installing this Kraken Z53 RGB. We are also gonna go about getting the RGB working because you can't just plug it right in. There's no extra USB port to uh, run the, the fans and the RGB in here. So I'm gonna show you how to solve that too. And uh, everything that you see on the table, any parts that can go in here that are for cooling, will be linked down in the description down below. Of course, you probably do want to purchase some um, Thermal Grizzly if you don't get like the Master, or sorry, Cool Master is really funky about how they name their stuff. So this thing is a Cool Master, Master Liquid Pro. Uh, it's just a mouthful. But of course, you can get yourself some Cool Master Pro um, version 2 thermal paste that's going to be the best or the best one that i think and it works the best or you could get some thermal grizzly cryo knot that's going to be my second best go-to thermal paste if you see any stress testing or you talk about any thermals it was done with the, the thermal grizzly cryo knot we're going to jump over to the on screen really quick here to look at the temps and it looks like uh you could see the line is doing a really good job of staying below 60 celsius i know there's a little bump in there we had to reset the test some things went on but if you i mean if you look here we're at 100 percent cpu and of course our GPU is at 99%. Uh, 3D Mark Time Spy will not run the CPU and GPU at 100% at the same time, so I'm also running OCC tool in the background to get at 100% CPU. As you can see with the AIO cooler, we're not even popping above 60C, but let's jump back over here and uh, yeah. But other than that guys, we are gonna get everything laid down, this thing powered down the side off, and we are gonna get this uh, prepared for installing the AIO. Of course, as you can see, I already have it installed because we came back from the future and we just wanted to show you how cool it looked. I do want to make a shout out to one of my subscribers that has answered a bunch of comments, RS390. Dude, thank you, I appreciate it. And anybody else that's helped any of my other subscribers in the comments, I appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. And yes, we're gonna get down to this upgrade and we're gonna knock this thing out of the park. We're gonna start off by retrieving our very long screws. We're going to set both our fans up on top here and line them up on the top of our radiator. Of course, making sure that the wires face towards the inside of the case. What I mean by this is if you put the radiator in there and the hoses are coming down, you want the wires to face the inside. It's all right if you make a mistake, you just pull the radiator back out and flip it around. But uh, one quick thing here, once we get to the RGB portion of this, this is where you can skip it, that little card on the that you see there, the red card. And of course, we're going to time lapse installing these screws because nobody wants to sit here and watch me put uh, eight screws down into fans, but make sure they're nice and snug. You don't need to superman these down. Uh, the reason I say you don't want to over tighten them is because you don't want to bend the fan frame out of whack and then the fans don't work correctly. Uh, but once they're all nice and tight, we are going to go ahead and finish up the RGB stuff on this fan. And the first thing we're going to do is plug the in and out. And this is for the lighting on the fan. You plug in the middle wire. Um, if it feels like it's not going in, flip the wire around. It can be a little bit confusing. With my dyslexia, I definitely was sitting here like, why isn't this going in? Right, this is what's going to allow the NZXT's uh, fans and RGB to be controlled because it's a USB 2.0 header. Of course, this is a 3.0 to 2.0 female to male uh, adapter. As you can see, it looks a little bit strange. I'll have all this stuff linked down in the description down below. I have links for you to order it. Of course, this PCIe card and this uh, USB adapter are not included. You're going to want to purchase them separately. Gives you that little header that you can plug into. That's going to allow us to plug the RGB and fan controller in later. 
And of course, now we're going to go back to the fans and we are plugging in the uh, RGB control wire that goes to the main head unit, which is the actual uh, pump and heatsink. And then the ball of wires we have right here. It's very important that the first fan you plug in is the one that has four pins. And then it doesn't matter where the next fan goes. It can go to any of the other three pin uh, headed ones right here. And then, of course, uh, the next wire we're going to plug in is the RGB control wire, which we've just got done plugging into the fans. And it's only going to fit in one way. You can't screw it up. And then, of course, I just bundle the wires up to kind of keep them out of the way and get ready to install this into the case. Of course, I'm also going to pull the tape off of the heat sink right here, and I'm going to put the Intel bracket on. And you want to make sure that this is square with the actual um, uh, water lines or AIO lines, because if it's not square, the heat sink is going to sit cantered and then it's just, it makes it hard for the graphics on the screen to stay proper. All right, guys, we're going to clean our processor off. One thing I didn't show is removing the heat sink, but of course, that's a pretty simple task. There's four screws right here. You pull them out and, you know, you're off to the races. And now we're going to take this uh, other side panel off because we need to actually feed that wire that you've seen that we were messing around with through here. Otherwise, you know, we don't want all that extra slack sitting in the case. We also remove, need to remove this uh, backplate bracket off and it is adhesive slash double sided sticky tape down and I have these little blue pry bars that won't mar up the motherboard and they work freaking awesome by iFixit. Uh, of course, it's because you can see even after taking it off four or five times, this thing is still kind of a beast to get off and it still does take a little bit of force to pop it off. Um, of course, once you got it off, there's a bracket that NZXT includes, and this is the bracket you see me install right here. It has little movable heads inside there, and, you, and they're kind of tight, but uh, they do move back and forth. And the best thing right here is a little tip I will give you is stick a piece of tape, duct tape or gaff tape or anything up here to hold this bracket here, uh, especially if you're only one person doing the install. You really don't have three hands, and it's hard to hold this on the other side while you're trying to do uh, the nuts right here. Of course, and now I'm going to start putting down the actual standoff nuts to hold the heat sink. Uh, make sure these are tightened down all the way. You don't need to tool tighten these. Just get them snug. They'll stop. They, they, the threads are meant to go until they stop. And then, of course, we're going to pop the three tabs up here towards the top, and it's going to let that screen pop off. And this is going to allow us to put our screws in for our uh, 240 millimeter AIO. Now we're going to install the 1X uh, USB uh, card adapter. And we're going to also route the wire quick. And as you can see, I'm just trying to line it up here and get it in the, the socket. And then go ahead and screw it on down and feed your wire to the closest hole so it's not running through the case. As you can see, it also gives you two USB 3.0 uh, ports in the rear, which is a plus. So it's, it's really nice having that card because it uh, adds USB headers and it also gives you control of the NZXT, which normally wouldn't be controllable without a USB 2.0 header, which kind of sucks because there's other coolers like this too. There is another USB 2.0 header, but it is utilized by the Legion RGB uh, controller. And if you try to steal it, it pretty much breaks the RGB for the rest of the Legion, which kind of sucks. Uh, FYI. And also, I just removed that tape, which is kind of important. And then we're going to feed that uh, USB wire back through towards the top. So because that's going to go to the actual uh, uh, water pump heat sink that we install. It's a little like uh, mini USB that has to be installed here. I'm going to wrap it up and tuck it up so it's not in our way when we go to install the radiator. We don't want that getting stuck behind there because we're going to need that for later. Of course, now we're going to start feeding in our ball of wires and just feed them in towards the top. And this is kind of hard because there's a, a bunch of clasps and stuff that kind of get stuck. So take your time here, but just get them fed through. You're going to end up having to feed this back through anyways. We're just feeding this through so all the, the ball of wires isn't sitting on the inside of the case and disrupting airflow or making it look, you know, ugly as crap. There's actually going to be three plugs that are very important here. Uh, one's a SATA power, one's a PWM for the fan controller, and the other one plugs back into the actual water block AIO. All right, guys, we're going to get set and we're going to start installing the radiator here. Uh, one thing I do want to mention on that ball of wires that we feed in, there is a SATA power plug that you're going to have to plug in the rear, but we're not going to do that right here really quick. We are actually going to start installing the radiator. And as you can see, they got slotted holes for installing the radiator. I push it all the way forward because I end up installing a 2080 uh, Super with a hybrid cooler, and that just shows you how many radiators can actually fit in this Legion case, which is kind of neat. Of course, uh, that's if you were to do true water, water cooling, you could put a, a 240, 280 on the top and a 120 in the rear, which should be sufficient to cool this bad man pajama. Uh, as you can see, I'm not going to make you sweat through putting all the screws in here. So I, of course, I time lapse it. 
And uh, once we get done installing these screws, we can get moved on to installing the rest of the cooler. Of course, I pop the little grill piece back on there and snap it in there. And now, as you can see, I had the SATA power plug that is bopping around right there already plugged in. And then we're going to feed the two wires that uh, end up needing to plug into the heat sink or the pump back through. One's a header that goes to the motherboard. That's going to give you, uh, that's going to report PWM settings like your pump and your fan uh, RPMs to the motherboard. All right, after feeding both the wires through, we're going to plug them back into the main pump slash control unit, and that's the control wire and the USB micro. All right, uh, of course, the U, even though we're plugging in the USB, just be aware that you'll probably have to unplug that because the nuts that actually secure the heatsink down or the water block, it, it might be in the way. And of course, uh, most of the times you end up having to remove it anyways. So we're going to start adding some thermal paste to our CPU. I do in a big circle like this. It's I'm not adding a lot. Uh, the most you want to really add here is a pea size. They're a little bit larger than a pea size, and that's going to be about it. Of course, this is Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut. It's one of my favorite thermal pastes. It's next to Cool Master Master Gel V Pro 2. Yeah, that's a mouthful. Thanks, Cool Master, for the crazy freaking product names. Uh, I swear, the naming of your products drives me crazy. Even though they're wonderful products, the, the naming schemes just is like, whoa. All right, we're going to go ahead and start adding the four nuts here. You're going to want to do a square pattern, which pretty means you start one nut, go in a diagonal, start another nut. I hand tighten them all the way down until they get kind of snug, and then we could screwdriver down them the rest of the way. And of course, as you can see, I'm following that square pattern it's very important to get even constant pressure across the ish and heat sink so the thermal base spreads out evenly and fills any gaps that it should go ahead and plug that usb micro back into the top of the aio cooler and pump and then we're going to go ahead and do some wire management and we're going to try to stuff these wires above the memory and the radiator between the two uh, one last wire we do need to plug in and that is this pwm uh, fan header to the cpu uh, header on the motherboard uh, it's kind of important because it allows our motherboard to know that our, we have fans or a pump or something hooked up there that it can actually cool the cpu guys this is amazing i really enjoyed doing this upgrade i mean this thing looks awesome look at these rgb fans up here I mean, of course, you don't have to go this costly and get the NZXT Kraken, but I just think this thing's amazing. One plus I do like about this cooler is you can just look at a glance and see how hot your GPU and CPU are when you're gaming. Of course, you don't have to run an overlay that's gonna decrease frames per second. And yeah, I think it's just really neat. So is it worth the extra money? I don't know, you'd be, the deci you'd be the decider of that. I can't make that decision for you. I think it's worth it. The RGB stuff, meh, I could use without it, but LCD screen on uh, the cooler, I give it two thumbs up of approval. But other than that, guys, you're like, hey, Technit, what's that blabbing and let's get the numbers here. <laughs> yeah, I know. All right, guys, so amazing. We have some amazing numbers. Of course, it, well, it's not amazing by now if you've been watching my videos. The stock crappy Intel stock cooler maxed out at 96 Celsius. Holy crap. Of course, it didn't ride there at 96 Celsius. Its average was 89 Celsius. And of course, the min for the stock was 34 Celsius. We did put the Nocto in here is the NHU9S. And this is the, the numbers that I'm going to go over. It maxed at 78 Celsius, which isn't too bad. Of course, this is like where it peaks out. It doesn't stay here. Its min was 35 Celsius, which you'd expect. You know, that's the starting temperature of when I ran the four-hour stress test of 3D Mark Time Spot and OCCT. And it averaged 65 Celsius. So I'm going to say it's averaged pretty close to the AIO cooler. Um, the AIO cooler did score a couple Celsius below that. And, of course, let's get over to the AIO uh, temperatures. Our max was 73 Celsius with this AIO, the NZXT240. Our min was 32 Celsius, so it was a couple, couple degrees lower. And then, of course, our average was 64 Celsius. Uh, I'm going to have to say that the AIO does win out by a couple Celsius. Um, of course, our GPU across the board, uh, the stock was 55, our Nocto was 53, and our AIO was 52. So we, we only seen about a Celsius difference. Of course, if I ran the stress test for like eight or 10 hours, you would start to see bleed over, and you could actually see one or the other starting to soak up you know, the heat from one another. It's called radiant heat. It does happen if you do have long gaming sessions. Of course, this is not what you are gonna see Gaming, you're never going to see your CPU and GPU at 100% uh, if you have decently modern equipment. Um, I'm going to have to say, guys, I really think that this is a cool upgrade, and this is something you can do. Of course, all the parts you've seen me install in this video are going to be linked down in the description down below. And other than that, guys, I'm Tech Nitwin, and I hope you guys like, comment, and subscribe, and I'm out, y'all.